Welcome back. So in the previous lecture of uh, mobile head augmented, in, we will discuss about the basic fundamentals. And in this lecture, we are uh, more concentrating on the routing protocols. Why? Right? Because mobile head of networks uh, is uh, more uh, strong enough in routing protocols. So we will discuss one by one. So as in uh, traditional routing, uh, we need to set up the routing table in uh, each and every router. So let us assume if we have uh, 1 to 12 nodes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up to 12 nodes and we have an undirected graph. Let us assume the routing table, how the routing table was maintained at node 1. So for node 1, this is the routing table. So like this, every node has to maintain its own routing table based on the updations from its neighbors. So in mobile network networks, what uh, is always the mobile node is trying to move from one location to another location. That's why. So the, these uh, uh, nodes are frequently uh, communicating with each other in regular intervals. So when they are communicating with each other, when the node 1 is uh, communicating with node 2, these two nodes are interchanging the routing table uh, available at that particular node. That is, the routing table at node 1 is transmitted to node 2 and routing table uh, at node 2 is transmitted to node 1 like that so in the first cycle so when the second time it was refreshed again when it is uh, first time refreshed there is no table available in each each of the nodes so when it is second time refreshed again the routing table at 2 which includes the information of 6 8 and 4 so these three in the uh, uh, information which is included in the table was transmitted to node 1 in the next refreshment. The third refreshment, the node 2 uh, is having the information about 5, 7, 8, at 6. So the same table is transmitted like that. After some particular number of uh, refreshments, every node is going to have the information about all the remaining nodes. So after some refreshments, then the routing table uh, uh, which is uh, showing here is available at node 1. So if you see the, uh, the table contains here, only I am specifying two fields that is destination and next hope. So destination 1 itself is a source that is why there is no next hope. And the, uh, if the destination is 2, source is 1, the next hope is 2 and 1, 2, 3, next hope is 3. 1 to 4, there is no direct path, so that's why either it may pass through 2 or 3. The path is 1 to 2, 2 to 4, or 1 to 3, 3 to 4. Any one we can take. Like, so for 6 node, 1 to 2, 2 to 6, the next hope is 2. And for 8, the next hope is 2. Like that, it will maintain information about remaining all the uh, nodes. So a node make a local choice depending on the topology which is available globally. So another uh, vector, another uh, uh, routing uh, protocol is called a distance vector as well as link state routing. So in this, both assumes the uh, router knows address of each neighbor, cost of the reaching each neighbor. Uh, in both, uh, both are same. The only the difference is so distance vector knows cost to each destination. So before transmitting the distance vector uh, routing protocol is uh, uh, get the information what is the total cost we need, uh, uh, total cost to send the data to the destination. Whereas in the case of link state, the router knows entire network topology and computes the shortest path. So every node information is available at, uh, at uh, remaining nodes so that the shortest path can be found. So let us see one by one what it is. So in distance vector, let us take one example of uh, undirected graph. So we have four nodes A, B, C, D and we have some weights to transmit the data that is cost. The cost required to transmit the uh, information from A to B is 1, A to C is 4, C to D is 4, B to C is 1 and B to D is 1. So in this case, so we'll, we'll uh, derive one uh, distance matrix. Uh, we have four nodes A, B, C, D and A, B, C, D. 
and the distance from A to A is 0, A to B is 1, A to C is 4, A to D is unknown. There is no direct path, still no. And B to A is 1 and B to B is 0, B to C is 1, B to D is 1. C to A, C to A the cost is 4, C to B the cost is 1, C to D the cost is uh, uh, C to C the cost is 0 and C to D the cost is here 4 but if we pass through B 1 plus 1 it becomes 2 and D to A there is no direct path here and D to B 1, D to C 4 and D to D 0. So like this it will maintain uh, the complete information about that particular uh, mobile nodes. So let us assume the computation at A when uh, distance vector from B. So this is the distance vector that is 0, 1, 4 and infinity and A to B. And here uh, let us assume the cost to go to B. A to B is 1, B to B is 0, C to B is 1 d to b is 1. So the cost to the destination from b are these are the costs and from a if I assume through I want to pass through b to each and every destination. So cost to every destination through b. <coughs> so a to <coughs> sorry a to d the cost is uh, 2 through B and B to D the cost is 1, C to D the cost is 1 plus 1, 2 and D to D the cost uh, is uh, D 2. So current cost from A is this one 0, 1, 4 infinity. and we need to take the minimum of these two. 2 and 0 the minimum value is 0, 1 and 1, 4 and 2 and 2 and infinity b, 2. So this is a new distance vector for A. So like this it will calculate the distance vector for each and every node. If we come to link state routing here, let us assume the source is uh, A and the destination is E, let us assume or F. So when we are transmitting there are several paths are there either we may pass from A to B, B to C, C to E, E to F or A to uh, D, D to E, D to F or A to D, D to C, C to E, E to F like this we have several paths are there. So let us assume I am taking the source as uh, I am representing the uh, dark dotted uh, circle that is source so I am taking A here from A we have two paths are there either to B or to D. So I'm going to B from A the total cost is 1. I'm going to D from A the total cost is 2 like this. Two possibilities are there. So if I consider the first part possibility B of uh, A comma 1, I'm taking A comma B of phi comma 1. So from B again the possibility is to go to C. One possibility is there. Uh, B to A it is already visited so no need to write again. So B to C the cost is 1, I am writing I'll write C of B comma 2, 2 I am getting from A that is 1 plus 1, 2, D A comma 2 keep as it is. Now so from B already visited then go to C or uh, next, uh, next is D A comma 2. So, a, B, A comma 1, D, A comma 2, B to D I am checking and from D there are two possibilities are there, one is E and another one is C, C is already finished so no need to write again, so E, D comma 4, 2 plus 2, 4, from A to E the, the via D the cost is 4, so again I am taking C of B comma 2, so A, D of A comma 1, D of A comma 2, C of B comma 2 and from C again uh, two possibilities are that T and E, D is already finished so we will take E uh, through C 
the total cost is 1 plus 1 plus 1, 3. So, P of C comma 3. Like this, till last we uh, came to know from A to B, B to C, C to D, D to E and E to F. This is the path. Okay. A to B and B to C, C to D, D to E, E to F. The total cost we will get is 1 plus 2, 3, 3 plus 2, 5, 5 plus 3, uh, 8, 8 plus 6, 14. That is, uh, no need to calculate all these things. The last, uh, uh, which is already added here, when you are writing here, you already added. So, if you are not adding here, we need to uh, add the total value of this. If you are already added, then no need to take add again. Simply take the final value 6. That is from A to B, B to C, C to D, E to F. The total cost is 6. See, A to B is 1, B to C is 1, C to D is uh, 1, D to E and E to yeah, like this. So, C to E and E to F. So, this is uh, the example for link state routing. And what is meant by routing and mobility? Routing means by finding the path from source to destination. Source is available in one location and destination is available in another location. So as we know, this is multi-hope. That is, uh, uh, there are uh, several nodes in between source and destination. So when you are de designing, when we have the concept of mobility as well as routing, we need to consider the issues like the frequent route changes, that is amount of data transmitted between route changes may be much smaller than the traditional networks. So route changes may be related to the host movement, low bandwidth links. And the goal of uh, the routing protocols which you are going to use and which you are going to design is decrease routing related overhead, find short routes and find stable routes that is in spite of mobile mobility. So if you consider another example of mobile IP and we have a source, we have a mobile host and we have multiple routers. So the source want to communicate with mobile host that has to be transmitted through router 1 as well as router 2. And as we know, the mobility concept we have that means always the mobile node want to uh, uh, shift from one location to another location. If suppose the mobile node is moving from this location to this location, ultimately source 2, router 1, router 1 to router 2, router 2 to router 3. So this is called router 2 is called home agent and router 3 is called foreign agent. So let us come to the various categories of routing protocols in brief. Basically, we have here not one type is not mentioned here. Basically, we have three types of routing protocols are there. One is proactive, proactive routing protocols and reactive routing protocols. And third one is called hybrid routing protocols. So proactive means before uh, transmitting the data, before initiation the transmission of data, it will check how many hopes are there. It will count the hope count, how many hopes are there in between source and destination and what is the total cost to, to transmit the data from source to destination like that. Before transmitting, it will find the path and after finding the path and after finding the remaining parameters, it will start the transmission of data. In the case of reactive, so it doesn't uh, check the path before transmitting. When it is required, that is on demand, you can say, simply call it as source initiated on demand. So when it is required, it will check the path and it will check the remaining parameters, it will start transmission. Hybrid in the sense combination of these two, that is uh, proactive as well as reactive, that is both property it is having, sometime it will, ask, uh, it will act as a reactive and sometimes it will act as a proactive. So there are uh, uh, the various categories of proactive routing protocols are destination, sequenced, distance vector routing and cluster head gateway switch routing, core extraction, distributed ad hoc routing, optimized link state routing. So in general, most of the magnets are uh, using 
reactive routing protocols which includes dynamic source routing, location edit routing, ad hoc on demand distance vector routing, power aware routing, associative based routing, signal stability routing, temporarily order routing algorithm. So they are the various uh, reactor routing protocols. If it comes to hybrid uh, ZRP that is zone routing protocol which is a combination of proactive as well as reactive. So let us see one by one. Let, let, let's uh, we start with reactive routing protocol. So in uh, proactive protocols always if they maintain the routes as we discussed now little or no delay for route determination consume bandwidth to keep routes up to date maintain routes which may never be used so even though we are not using the routes it the, the uh, these protocols will maintain the complete path periodically updated in case of reactive routing protocols lower overhead since the routes are determined on demand there is no predetermined routes when it is required on demand based on our requirement the routes were determined so significant delay in route determination due to this we, we need to uh, wait to get the route routing information employing flooding as well as control traffic may be busty source initiates route discovery so in case of uh, hybrid adaptive combination of uh, proactive as well as reactive the example is zone routing protocol so which approach achieves a better rate of depending on the traffic and mobility patterns so we'll see one by one so dynamic source routing so even node s want to send a packet to node d but uh, does not know a route to d so in this case what what uh, when the node s want to send some data but it doesn't know where the D is available. So S initiates the route discovery. It S has to find where the node D is available. So it has to find the route from source to destination. So in, to, to process this, it will flood route request to all its neighbors and each node appends its own identifier when forwarding route requests. So this is the example let us assume we have a source and we have a destination from source to destination i, I want to transmit uh, some uh, message so in this case first s will broadcast the route request to its neighbors to find the route from source to destination so let us assume s is the source here so from s it will transmit to b C E it will broadcast. So next from B it will run uh, broadcast to A H as well as again to S. C from B to A, B to H, B to S again. Previously alert is broadcasted to C again. Now C is broadcasting to S as well as H again from E it will broadcast. That is there is more redundancy was there <coughs> so the the, the uh, there was a more burden on that particular network in uh, in this communication process so the communication path is at c is s comma c and communication path at e is s comma e s to e and when it reaches to f s e f and s e g and s b h and here S B H I like that. So again, these neighbors will uh, broadcast to its neighbors again. So again, these neighbors will be broadcast here. So once it reaches to destination, it will stop the process. That means until it reaches the destination, it has to broadcast the complete routing information to its neighbors again. So there is more uh, button on the network due to redundant of uh, redundancy in uh, transmitting the same, uh, retransmitting the same request which is transmitted by the previous node. So if we consider the node J, the path is S E F J, and if we consider node K, S C G K, and then D. So since node J and K are uh, uh, 
hidden from each other they transmit may collate why because this is another path this is another path so the k don't know j is transmitting the path from source to destination at the same time j don't know k is transmitting the path from source to destination so in this case there may be a collision so once uh, it it was uh, finalized so node d as we said now node d doesn't forward any route request because do e, d, d is the destination so it doesn't transmit again so like this it will uh, in dynamic source routing the route was discovered from source to destination so once it was uh, uh, discovered the route it has to reply from destination to source so in um, uh, route reply it will uh, send whatever the path it was selected in uh, route request so the same path will be replied to the destination so <clears throat> when uh, the when the node uh, s is receiving a route reply when it is receives route reply so caches the route included in the route reply that is s it will reverse the route d d j e e f e s will be cached uh, by the source that is s e f j d so route reply includes the route uh, from s to d d and on which route request was received by the node so when node s sends a data packet to d uh, the entire route is included in the packet header so hence the name itself is suggest in dynamic source <coughs> that is so for when it is transmitting the header information will include the this, uh, entire uh, route uh, information so intermediate nodes use the source route included uh, uh, in a packet to determine uh, to whom the packet should be forwarded so like this a data will be delivered and in dynamic source routing uh, when the route was uh, caching so each node caches uh, when a new route that is each node caches a new route uh, it learns by any means so when node s finds the route s e f in the previous slide s e f j d to node d node s also learns the route s e f to node f like this the source will came to know what is the path so when node k receives route requests s c j uh, destined for node and k learns the route k g c s to node s so when node f forwards the route reply uh, to uh, through s e f j d node f learns route f j d to node d like this so when node e forwards data to uh, s e f j d it learns the route e f j d to node d when node e forwards uh, uh, a node uh, may also learn a route when it is overheads the data so in this we have a problem called stale uh, catches may increase overhead so we have several advantages as well as disadvantages in uh, dynamic source routing when we comes to advantage routes maintained only between nodes who need to communicate uh, radio and uh, reduce overhead of route maintenance route caching can further be red, uh, reduced to route discovery overhead a single route discovery may yield many routes to destination due to intermediate nodes replying from local caches disadvantage so when we comes to disadvantages of uh, dynamic source routing packet header size grows uh, with uh, route length due to source routing flood of route requests may potentially uh, reach all nodes in the network potential collisions between route requests propagated by the neighboring nodes 
insertion of random delays before forwarding route requests and increased contention if too many routes are replied come back due to nodes replying using their local cache so so route reply problem and another routing protocol in reactive is location added routing so which exploits location information to limit scope of uh, uh, route request to flood that is instead of simply flooding route request to all neighboring nodes the source has to expect where the destination is available so only for that particular area or simply for that zone it will broadcast the information uh, to finding the path called route request so in this it is determined as a region that is expected to hold the current location of the destination expected region determined based on potentially old location information and knowledge of destination speed route requests limited to request zone that contains the expected zone and location of the sender node like this so instead of simply broadcasting it will send uh, only some selected nodes where uh, the zone was expected so like this so it will first define a request zone and so uh, it will flood to all the neighboring nodes in that particular zone instead of uh, broadcasting to all nodes only in that particular uh, respected zone uh, it will broadcast through all the nodes until the destination was reached so when we compare with the dynamic source routing it is it will reduce somehow the some amount of uh, overload on that particular network so that this is a request zone and this is expected zone and will define xd plus r and yd plus r so it will broadcast to all the neighbors until the, which is similar to dsr but instead of sending instead of uh, broadcasting route request all the neighbors so within that uh, expected zone only it will broadcast so like dsr it is also having some advantages as well as disadvantages that is it will reduce the scope of route request and reduce overhead of route discovery as, uh, when we compare with dsr advantages nodes need to know their physical locations does not take into account possible existence obstructions for radio transmissions so another uh, protocol called ad hoc on demand distance vector so in distance vector in uh, aod uh, just like dsr so dsr includes source routes in packet headers so resulting large uh, headers can sometimes degrade the performance when so instead of sending the data it will take more amount of uh, bandwidth for header only so uh, due to this the performance may be reduced particularly when data contains a packet or a packet or small so in that case the size of data is less than the size of the header so aodv attempts to improve on dsr by maintaining routing tables at the nodes at same uh, so that the data packets do not uh, have to contain the routes but because every uh, node is maintaining its own routing table so no need to send the uh, routing uh, information in the header like uh, dsr so aodv retains a desirable feature of uh, dsr that routes are maintained only between nodes which need to communicate so instead of maintaining the routes for every uh, individual nodes uh, this aodb will maintain the route routing information in which the data is going to be transmitted that is uh, uh, that is in which path in which a route our data is transmitted only that route that route is maintained by uh, the aodb so route requests similar to uh, dynamic source routing and when node rebroadcasts a route request it sets up a reverse path pointing to the source 
so so in dsr what what happens when the route request is reaching to the destination from the destination it will reply the route but in aodv when the uh, route request is broadcasted to its neighbors immediately it will reverse the path that is that is the main concept in aod <clears throat> why because aod assumes symmetric that is uh, we can call bidirectional links there is no directed path so when the uh, intended des uh, destination receives a route request it replies by sending the route reply as a dsr so route reply travels along the reverse path set up when route, route uh, request is forwarded so let us take one example of uh, aodv so it will send the requests like dsr it will broadcast to all the neighbors but uh, instead of uh, waiting for the destination uh, the neighbors will reverse the path to the initiated source so like this so s will broadcast to all the neighbors and so immediately it will reverse the path the neighbors will reverse the path to the source and these node will broadcast to its neighbors in the next phase these paths are also reverses to the initiated source so like this so every time until it reaches to the destination it will broadcast to its neighbors and its neighbors will uh, reverse the path to the initiated source so so like this <clears throat> so when uh, node d does not forward route request to its neighbors again why because this is a destination so once it reaches to destination uh, it will uh, set up, set the path that is these uh, we can call this as forward links and these forward links are uh, set up when root request root reply travels along with the reverse path so when it is tra uh, traveling from d to s it will set the uh, forward path it is reversed so link failure after establishing the path what happens if link failures what uh, what was the case if suppose when the route request as well as route reply was performed by the dynamic uh, sorry uh, this aodv route request includes the last known sequence number for the destination at the same time an intermediate node may also uh, send a route reply provided uh, it knows a more recent path that uh, the one previously known to the sender so intermediate nodes that forward the re route reply also record the next hope to the destination and one more thing we need to consider in uh, uh, route request as well as route reply is a routing table entry maintaining the reverse path is uh, after the timeout interval and routing table entry maintaining uh, a forward path is not used for the active route timeout entry. so when the link failures uh, after uh, route reply or at the time of route reply or route request so a neighbor of x is considered active for the routing table entry if the neighbor sent the packet within active route timeout interval which was forwarded using that entry that is when it receives this message it comes to know uh, uh, that route is live so if the route uh, does not send any message within this particular uh, interval then it says it, it assumes the link was failed so when the next hope link in a routing table entry uh, breaks so all the active neighbors are uh, in fact informed due to the uh, uh, regarding that particular link failure so link failures are uh, propagated by means of route error messages so which also update the destination sequence numbers and that is neighboring nodes periodically exchanging hello messages to uh, represent we are not the links are not failed the links are alive so root error 
when node x is unable to forward the packet p that is from node s to d on link x gamma y so it generates root error message if it is unable to forward the packet so node x increments uh, the destination sequence number for d cache that node x so the incremented sequence number is included in root error when node s receives root error it initiates new root discovery for uh, d using the destination sequence symbol but because that particular root was uh, uh, in that particular root the link was failure so the s has to start from initial stage again it has to discover the root it has to request and it has to reply and data transmission so when node d receives the root request with the destination sequence number n node d will set its sequence number to n unless it is already larger than n we will see in detail so another uh, routing protocol is uh, if we uh, if we consider the aodv the overall uh, summary of uh, aodv will be uh, of so routes need not to be included in the packet header and nodes maintain routing tables containing entry only for the routes which are uh, uh, in active and at most one next hook per destination maintained at each node and dsr may maintain several routes for the single destination and sequence numbers are used to avoid old broken routes sequence numbers prevent uh, information of uh, that is formation of routing loops and unused routes expire even if the topology does not change so another routing protocol is power aware routing so we have many variations of uh, using control packet flooding for route discovery so assign weight to each link and modify dsr dynamic source routing to incorporate weights and prefer a route with smallest aggregate weight so if you see each node is having its own weights so this is the source and d is the destination and if you go through this route 5 plus 7 12 12 plus 3 uh, 12 plus 3 15 15 plus 2 17 and if you go through this route 8 8 plus 3 11 11 plus 3 13 one path and 2 2 plus 4 6 6 plus 3 9 9 plus 3 11 so like this we have multiple paths we, we need to find the total weight of each and every path and which is a smaller weight for that path that destination has to reply and here 18 13 11 are the weights uh, for the three individual routes and 11 is the minimum so for the route 11 the weight which is having root uh, 11 it will be replied and associative associative based routing so the only links that have been uh, stable for some minimum duration so if you want to establish a route uh, it will check whether uh, these links are stable for minimum period of time minimum duration of time so if they are stable then that particular routes are utilized so nodes increment the associative critics of neighbors by using periodic beacons as we said now so every node is uh, periodically communicating with its neighbors so so abr associative based routing considers the stability of a link that is called degree of association stability and measured by number of beacons received from the other end of the link and the higher degree of link stability the lower mobility of node at the link's other end <coughs> that is every time it will send the beacons it will uh, the count will be incremented based on the incremented count it will uh, decide whether the link is stable or not if you consider the example uh, when in that particular uh, zone if the link was not stable then 
So on route error, the node performs local search in hope of the repairing the path. So it assumes this path is going to be repaired. So for that, it, it has to search. If the local search fails, route error is reported to the source so that the source will search uh, for another route. So another routing algorithm in uh, proactive is Signal Stability Adaptability, SSA. So in uh, if node X or node A rebroadcast a root request received from Y, okay, only if X comma Y link has strong signal stability. So in previous algorithm, it will check whether the signal uh, link was stable or not, and here it will check whether strong strong signal was there or not. Any fluctuations are. So signal stability is evaluated as the moving average of the signal strength of packets received on the link in recent past. So if suppose if the uh, this, uh, the communication line or the communication path from B to D is not stable, then it has to search for another path. Let us see. So here A to C is not a strong stable signal and D2 is also there is no strong stable signal. So in this case we need to change. So previously the path is A to B, B to D and E to D to E, D to F and here due to uh, this unstable signal the path has to be changed. So if this particular it will detect this particular path was not stable then a to b b to c c to e e to f so like this the path will be established so another uh, algorithm we need to consider to uh, study about uh, the algorithm called temporarily uh, ordered algorithm that is tora so that will be based on link reversal algorithm for example so if the links are bidirectional but algorithm imposes logical directions on them so maintain a directed acyclic graph for each and every destination with the destination is being the only thing so let us assume here from a to t d is the destination so if any link was broken okay the basic uh, phenomenon link reversal algorithm is so every node other than the destination should have outgoing links every node other than the destination should have outgoing links so if you consider if a to b and some links are represented here so let us see one link was broken in this particular uh, graph so here this is the the link between G and D is broken. Let us assume. So, as we said now, any node other than the destination should have outgoing links. So, if any one node other than the destination is not having the outgoing link, in that case, we need to reverse the links. For example, a is having one outgoing, B is having F is having, E is having, C is having, and G is also is having. But uh, when we consider the node G, it does not have the outgoing links. Only two links are there, which are incoming links. G is not having the outgoing link. So in this case, we need to reverse the links of G. So these two. Uh, Previously, the links are F to G and E to G. Now, the G links are reversed G to E and E to F. Now, again, we will check whether every node is having outgoing link or not. Here, E is not having outgoing links as well as F is also not having at least one outgoing link. Again, reverse these two links of E and F. So, E links are reversed and F all the links are reversed. Now, again, check. B is not having the outgoing link, so for B, reverse them. 
and now check a is not having the uh, outgoing link so reverse the a at the same time f is also not having the outgoing link reverse the links of f so now check c is having e e is not having the outgoing links so we'll change so every node should have at least one outgoing link so now this is called link reversal algorithm so in ring reversal algorithm uh, we can call this as full reversal method the what are the process we did here is called full reversal method and partial method in the sense a node reverses incoming links from only uh, those neighbors who have not themselves reversed links previously so instead of every time reversing so which are uh, not reversed previously for that links only will reverse the links that is called partial reversal method so in this this algorithm will attempts to keep link reversals uh, local to where the feature uh, failure occurred and when the first packet is sent to a destination the destination oriented uh, dag is constructed that is uh, dag means uh, directed acyclic graph and the initial construction does not, does result in flooding of control packets we have some advantages as well as disadvantages in uh, link reversal algorithm the advantages are the link reversal method attempts to limit uh, updates to routing table at nodes in uh, uh, when the node was uh, having the broken link and partial reversal method tends to be better than full reversal method at the same time each node may potentially have multiple routes to a destination and the disadvantages we have for uh, link reversal is need a mechanism to detect link failure and hello messages may be used so if network is partitioned link reversals continuously uh, reveals the infinity so another algorithm called tora which is based on the link reversal algorithm and so the node broadcasts a query packet so which propagates to destination or the node having the route to the destination so recipient of the query broadcast an update uh, update packet listing is height with respect to the destination so each node that receives the update uh, sets its height to the greater than the height of the neighbor as we said uh, previously from which the update uh, came and creates a series of directed links from the query organizer to the node initiating the update so when node discovers a route is no longer valid it adjusts its height to so that it uh, it is a local maximum and transmit an update otherwise so when it is uh, finished it will send the clear so that is the at each node the logically separate copy of uh, tora is run for each destination that computes the height of the node with respect to the destination so height captures the number of hopes and next hope route discovery is by using query as well as update packets so tora modifies the partial link reversal method to able to detect partitions and when partition is detected all nodes in the partition are informed and link reversal is the partition in that partition so let us comes to proactive routing protocols so in that the first protocol is called dsdv destination sequenced distance vector so in this so each node maintains a routing table which stores the address of next hope cost metric towards each destination a sequence number that is created by the destination itself 
So each node periodically forwards the routing table to Nibus. That is, each node increments and appends the sequence number when sending uh, its local routing table. That is, each route is tagged with the sequence number as we know and uh, route with greater sequence numbers are preferred depending on, uh, based on the number of beacons. So each node advertises a monotically increasing event sequence number for itself and when a node decides the route, a route is broken, it increments the sequence number of the route and advertises it with infinite metric. So destination advertises new sequence number. So when, uh, as you see exactly how uh, the DSDB will work. So when X receives information from Y about the route Z, we have X, Y, Z and the X receives some information from Y and which contains the information about the Z. In this case, what it will do? So if the value of X, the value or the sequence number at X is greater than the sequence number at Y, that is which is transmitted by Y recently, then X ignores the routing information received from Y. If it is greater value than the value transmitted by Y, so simply it will ignore the value transmitted by y. If both are equal, then the cost of going through y is smaller than the route known to x, then x, x sets y as a next hope to z. If both are equal, then x decides y as a next hope. If s of x value, that is sequence number is less than the sequence number at y, then x sets y as a next hope to z and the value at x is updated which is equivalent to the value of y. So let us consider one example of DSDB. So we have uh, 1, 2, okay, around 7 mobile hosts are there. So let us see. When this mobile uh, node 4 or is, is moved to some other uh, place in that case what happens if we will see so it is assume the mobile host 4 the routing table at uh, uh, mobile host 4 is if destination is mobile host 1 next to hope is mobile host 2 and next to hope if uh, mobile host the destination is mobile host 2, it is 2. Next, no, mobile destination is mobile host 4, so mobile host 4 itself. 5, so if you want to transmit to 5, it, the mobile host 6. 7, mobile host 6. 8, mobile host 6, next to hope, like this. So, like it will maintain the destination, next to hope, metric, sequence number, install, flags, stable data. So each and every mobile node is going to have such kind of uh, the table which is going to be trans uh, forwarded to its snipers. So if you consider uh, the uh, uh, routing table which is advertised by mobile host 4, to its neighbors mobile host 2 and 6 as we said now the same and this is the forwarding table so this is again uh, the updated uh, table this node is moved to this location so next to hope will be changed so another protocol called cluster head gateway switch routing protocol. So in CGSR, all the nodes uh, within the cluster communicate with the cluster head that will act as a, uh, one node will act as a cluster head in that cluster. So routing uses hierarchical cluster head to gateway approach, hierarchical manner. So it uses uh, DSDV 
as underlying protocol and least cluster change clustering algorithm. A cluster head is able to control the group of ad hoc hosts and each node will maintain two tables instead of one single large table. The cluster member table containing the cluster head for each destination node and distance vector routing table containing next to the destination. We will see one example here. So these seven nodes are divided into three clusters. Cluster 1 is having 1, 2, 3 nodes and cluster 2 is having 3, 4, 5. Cluster 3 is having 5, 6, 7. So these nodes are represented are the intersection nodes or simply we can these nodes will be treated as a uh, gateways like this. So these color nodes, these are nodes and these are gateways and these are cluster heads. In this cluster, node 2 will be the cluster head. In this cluster, node 4 is the cluster head. In this cluster, node 6 is the cluster head. Cluster head will maintain the complete information about the cluster. So the, ba the basic principles in routing are looking up of uh, the cluster head of the destination node, looking up of next hope and packet sent to the destination, destination cluster head delivers a packet and the drawback we have is too frequent cluster head selection can be overhead and cluster nodes and gateway can be bottleneck. So like this the communication path will be established. So every information has to be transmitted the, to the local cluster head from cluster head to gateway, gateway to another cluster head. Like this it will transmit it. So another uh, routing protocol is core extraction distributed ad hoc routing. You simply can call it as CEDAR. So in this, uh, the basic uh, idea behind this uh, core extraction distributed ad hoc routing <coughs> is so in which a subset of nodes in the network is identified as a core okay and so each node in the network must be adjacent to at least one node in the particular uh, core and each core node determines path to the nearby core nodes by means of localized broadcast. So this is example of uh, CEDR and the blue color nodes are core nodes and remaining nodes are uh, uh, in that nodes, respective nodes in that particular cluster. So another algorithm is called optimized link state routing. So in which let us assume node C and E are multi-point relays. C is having multiple relay points and E is also having the multiple relay points of node A. So multi-point relays of A are its neighbors such that each two hope neighbor of A is one hope neighbor of one multi-point relay of A. So each node's exchange neighbor lists to know their uh, two hope neighbors and choose multi-point relays. So node C and E forward information received from A. Node E and K are multi-point relays of node H and K forwards information received from H. <coughs> 